In this section, we'll look at solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Exponential equation is exactly what you hear. Equation that contains exponential functions, and you're equating that to either another exponential function, or some other quantity completely, or a constant. So an exponential equation is the equation that contains one or more quantities with variables in the exponent and you're trying to solve for the variable. Logarithmic equation then, on the other hand, would be an equation that contains one or more quantities where the variables are inputs of a logarithmic function. So you may be equating two logarithmic functions, you may be equating logarithmic function to a constant, and so on. So let's see how we can solve exponential and logarithmic equations. Can you come up with examples of logarithmic and exponential equations from your memory of what those functions were? Go ahead, pause the video here, and see if you can come up with some examples. You don't have to be able to solve them, but just create examples of log and exponential equations. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. You can do it, just come up with at least one or two. One exponential equation and one logarithmic equation. Go ahead, dig deep into your memory of what logarithmic and exponential functions were and create an example. Let's see what you can come up with. All right, assuming you have created these examples, here are some that I came up with. So we can say 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 5. So 2 is the base, x plus 1 is the exponent, and you're equating it to a constant. Or I could have 2 to the power x plus 1 equals 2 to the power 3x minus 5, or completely two different bases raised to exponents. So for logarithmic equations, I can have log base 2 of x plus 1 equals 5, or log base 2 of x plus 1 equals log base 2 of 3x plus 1, or log base 2 of x plus 1 equals log base 2 of 3x plus 1 plus a 5. These are just some examples of logarithmic and exponential equations. The question now is how do we solve them? Let's recall properties of logarithmic and exponential functions so that we can use them to undo and get solutions to log and exponential equations. So do you recall the relationship between converting an exponential equation to logarithmic equation, logarithmic equation to exponential equation? So let's recall that. Remember, exponential equation of the type y equals some constant a to power x. That's an exponential equation or exponential function. In order for us to find x, we would have to convert exponential equation into a logarithmic equation. So that would mean we would have to rewrite that as x equals log base a of y. If we had a logarithmic equation, x equals log base a of y, we can convert it to exponential equation. And so basically, you can go back and forth. So let's just look at how you would go back and forth. Watch very carefully, because this is exactly what you're going to need to do if you want to go solve exponential and logarithmic equations. Then this is one tool that you can use to go back and forth between them and solve for the interested variable. Let's recall the connection between exponential equations and how to convert them to equivalent logarithmic equations. So we have properties of exponents are if you have a to power x plus y, we can separate that as a to power x times a to power y. And let's just say a to power x is our u, a to power y is our v. a to power x minus y then can be separated as a to power x over a to power y. So in other words, it'll be u over v a to power n times x is the same as a to power x to power n, or in this case, u to power n, and a to power 0 is 1. So those are some properties of exponential equations. When you turn these to equivalent logarithmic equations, look what we get. 
our x plus y would equal log base a of u times v. x minus y would be log base a of u over v. n times x would equal log base a of u to power n. And 0 would equal log base a of 1. We've seen some of these properties before, but now we are bringing them back so we can use them to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. So if your exponential equation looks like a to power some function of x equals a constant c, where c is bigger than 0, then we can solve by using our equivalent logarithmic equation so you will have function equals log base a of the constant. Remember, log base a of a constant is just another constant, so you can treat it like you would as if it were a 3 or a 2 or some number. Similarly, if you have log base a of some function in x equals a constant, you can convert that to equivalent exponential equation so you would have f of x equals the base a to the power constant. Again, a to power of constant would be another constant. So let's take an example of how you would solve these kind of equations. So what if you are given 10 to power t equals 2 and log of 2t minus 1 equals 5? When there is no base written for a log, that means it's base 10. So go ahead, pause the video here see how you would use equivalent logarithmic and e exponential equations to solve these. Go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do. Go ahead, you can try. Assuming you've come back, you can see that solving an equation is undoing. The only way we know how to undo when the variable is in the exponent is what? Good, log. So in this case, log base 10. So if you solve this equation, you will end up with t equals log base 2. This is an exact answer. If you wanted to approximate it, you would use your calculators, which will give you 0 0.301 approximate. We've rounded it up. And so please always remember, you should never get an equation problem wrong because you can check it. So if I want to check this solution, t equals log base 2, look what we get. We get 10 to the power log base 10 of 2, and that gives us 2. You can check it. So it's always important to solve a solution and check your answer. All right, how are we going to get rid of this log base 10? You will turn it into equivalent exponential equation, so that will give you 2t minus 1 equals 10 to the power 5, right? So 10 to the power 5, which is... 1 and 5 zeros, and you add a 1 to it, so you would have 100,001 equals 2t, so t would equal 50,000.5, and again, please put it back into the original equation to check your solution. So if you check it, again, you will end up with log of 100,000, which is 5. So you can see that both solutions checked out. It's extremely important to go back and check your solutions. All right, try these on your own. Go ahead, pause the video here, see what you can do. Go ahead, you can do it. Good. So assuming you've come back, we have 500 times e to some function in t. So we would have to get rid of the 500 first. And so for solution, we would get divide both sides by 500. Now we have e to some function in t. The only way we can get rid of the e to the power is by rewriting it in an equivalent logarithmic form. Logarithm base e, so that would be natural log. So we have negative 0.02t equals natural log 1 over 25. And so if you want just t, divide both sides by negative 0.02. This is the exact solution. If you use your calculator, you'll get an approximate solution of 160.94. Again, use the exact solution to check your work, please.
Here we have divide both sides again by 500. So you have 40 over 500. After reducing 40 over 500, which is 2 25ths, now we have to create an equivalent exponential form of this equation. So that'll be x minus 10 equals basis 2, 2 to the power 2 over 25, then add 10 to both sides. So we've solved the equation for the variable x. You should always go back and plug it in to make sure that it really works. If you approximate this answer, it will be 11.057. But remember, 10 plus 2 to the power 2 25ths is the exact solution. What if it was base to a function of x equals the same base to a different function of x? We know that our exponential functions are one to one. So if the base is the same, the only way this can happen is if f of x equals g of x. Similarly, logarithm is a one-to-one -one function. So if log base a f of x equals log base a of g of x, then what do we have to do? We have to say f of x equals g of x because log base a is a one-to-one -one function. Let's see how we can use that to our advantage. So go ahead, pause the video here and see what you can do with these two problems. All right, so assuming you've come back, we have same base for the exponential equation. So that means that the two functions, that's x minus 5 and 3 minus 5x, must be equal to each other because the exponential functions are 1 to 1. So 6x would equal 8. Divide both sides by 6. So that would be 8 sixths or 4 thirds. Again, please go back and check that it really works. For the logarithmic equation, since it's log base 2 function is 1 to 1, we have x minus 1 equals 5x minus 7, or 4x equals 6, or 6 quarters, or 3 halves is our x. This is an exact solution. To check, let's check this to make sure you know how to check it. Always use the original equation to check. So to check, we have x equals, say, 3 halves, so we have log base 2 of 3 halves minus 1 equals log base 2 of 5 times 3 halves minus 7. Solving, you'll get log base 2 of 1 half equals log base 2 of 1 half. So it checks out. So it's extremely important that you remember to check your solution so that you never get a wrong answer. All right, let's see what you can do on this one. If you look carefully, it's not in the form you would like it to be, but we can make it like that. So 2 to the 7x minus 5 and 4 to the power 5 minus x. 4 can be written as 2 squared, right? So let's rewrite it. And so we will have 4 to the power 5 minus x is 2 squared to power 5 minus x. What do you do with exponents? You multiply them. So you multiply them, and they'll become 10 minus 2x. And so now we have 2 to the 7x minus 5 equals 2 to the power 10 minus 2x. So now 7x minus 5 must equal 10 minus 2x. Solving will give you 9x equals 15, or x equals 15 ninths, or 5 thirds. Here. Using properties of logarithm, we can combine them together. Now we have log base 3 of x times x minus 8 equals 2. So we can rewrite it as x squared minus 8x equals the base, which is 3 to the power 2. So now we have a quadratic equation. So when you solve, you can factor or use quadratic formula. Got x equals 9 or negative 1. So now what do we have to do? Are we done? No, good. We have to go check our solution in the original equation. So if you plug in, say, 9, 9 minus 8 with 1, so log of 1 base 3 is 0, log of 9 base 3 is 2. So 2 equals 2, that checks out. x equals negative 1, though, doesn't work because we know the domain of a log function is 0 to infinity. So 
even though we found x equals negative 1 as our solution, it doesn't work. So it's called extraneous solution. So only 9 is our solution and not the x equals negative 1. Of course, a natural question to ask would be, what if the two bases are different on left hand, right hand side, so that you have an exponential equation, a to power f of x equals b to power g of x. We can no longer just equate f of x and g of x because the bases are different. So what you do instead is take a to power f of x side, it doesn't matter which side you work with, but rewrite it in logarithmic form. So we would have f of x equals log base a of b to power g of x. And if we use the properties of logarithmic functions that we studied prior to now, that exponent of g of x will come and sit in front. So now you have f of x equals g of x times log base a of b. And since a and b are constants, log base a of b is just another constant, so you can treat it like a 2 or a 3. So you would multiply by the constant g of x, and then now you have just an equation in x, and you can solve that. So let's take an example so you can see how to do that. So pause the video here, see what you can do. Go ahead, try it on your own, please. This might look difficult, but it's not. Just remember the basic properties of logarithmic and e exponential equations, and then you should be able to solve it. Go ahead, give it a try. It's okay if it's wrong. Just try it, okay? Don't just sit there waiting for me. Trying and failing actually creates an intuitive sense of what is happening. So go ahead and do that. All right, assuming you've come back, let's take a look. So we're going to rewrite this in log base 2 form. So the equivalent equation would be x minus 5 equals log base 2 of 3 to the power 4 minus x. The 4 minus x is an exponent, so it can come and sit in front of log base 2 of 3. And now log base 2 of 3 is a constant, so multiply it out. So we have 4 times log base 2 of 3 minus x times log base 2 of 3. Remember, 4 times log base 2 of 3 is a constant. Negative 5 is a constant. Let's bring those to the same side. And let's bring the x log base 2 of 3 to the other side. So now. The reason for having all x's on the same side is we can factor the x out. And so we have x times 1 plus log base 2 of 3. 1 because x times 1 is x. x times log base 2 of 3 is the second quantity. The right hand side is exactly how we had. Since we want to solve for x, we will divide both sides by the 1 plus log base 2 of 3. This is the exact solution to our original equation. However, on the calculator, some calculators may actually have log base 2. But if you don't, don't fret. We can use change of base formula and rewrite log base 2 of 3 either as log 3 over log 2 or natural log 3 over natural log 2, and then evaluate it on a calculator to figure out what the approximate solution is. And so if I used log 3 over log 2 for a log base 2 of 3 using change of base formula, my approximate answer would be 4.38. And so this 4 log base 2 of 3 plus 5 over 1 plus log base 2 of 3 is an exact answer. All right, let's take some examples now where you have to figure out what type of exponential or logarithmic equation it is, and then solve. So all of your modeling that you did before will come back. So here we have Amy invested $4,000 at 5% interest, compounded quarterly. How long will she have to wait for her money to grow to $5,000? To solve this problem, then, you first have to remember compound interest formula. So that would be original, which is 4,000 times 
one plus interest rate is 0 0.05 quarterly, means compounded four times a year. So the denominator is four. And then how for how long to wait? So every year, four times interest is paid, so four times the number of years. And you want that to equal $5,000. And now you have an exponential equation, so now solve. So go ahead, pause the video here, solve the equation, and then we'll check it together. Go ahead, do it on your own. All right, assuming you've come back, we divide both sides by 4,000. And now we have 40 times natural log 1.0125, taking natural log on both sides. And then you want to solve for t, so divide both sides by 4 times natural log 1.0125, which is about 4 and a half years then. So you will have to wait 4 and a half years for your money to grow to $5,000. All right, what if you had a sample from a spruce tree that was discovered buried under 40 feet of clay while digging a well in eastern Wisconsin? It was found to contain 20% of its original carbon-14. This tree was buried thousands of years ago by glaciers advancing out of Lake Michigan and pushing the clay lake bottom ahead of them. It is known that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,000 730 years. Estimate how long ago the tree lived. This is a problem that shows you how carbon dating works. So go ahead, try it on your own, set it up, and then we'll see. All right, assuming you've come back, if you thought to yourself, oh no, I can't even start, well, you have to remember it's carbon-14 half-life. So it's a half-life problem, means half to the power. However, number of years have passed by, divided by the 5,730, because that's how many increments you have to see went by in order for us to solve the problem. A sub zero is the original amount of carbon-14 found. And so you only have 20% of its original carbon-14, which means that A of t is 20% of A sub zero. A zero is what the carbon-14 was present at the beginning. So 0.2 times A sub zero, that's 20% of the original amount, equals original amount times half, which is 0.5, to the power t over 5,730. Divide both sides by A sub zero and 0.5 to power t over 5730 would equal 0.2. And then take natural log. So natural log 0.2, natural log 0.5. This is the exponent, which will come and sit in front. And then solve for t. So multiply by 5730 and divide by natural log 0.5. And if you use your calculators, it will be approximately 13,300 years. So isn't that cool that we can figure out how old something is by looking at the amount of carbon-14. All right, go ahead and see. How long will it take for $5,000 earning 6% compounded quarterly to have the same value as $400, which earns 11% interest compounded continuously? So for both accounts to get the same value means we have the value from each account equaling each other. And so we will have 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 to power 4t equals 400 e to power 0.11t. So solving that, divide both sides by 400. So now we have 12.5 times 1.015 to power 4t equals e to the power 0.11t. There are two different bases involved here. So now what? Yeah, take natural log on both sides. So now we have natural log of 12.5 times 1.015 to power 4t equals 0.11t. Using properties of logs, we can separate this multiplication into an addition. Power of 4t will come and sit in front. So now we have equation in t. All t terms gather together and dump the natural log 12.5 to the other side, and then factor the t out. 
And so we have this quantity, which is about 50 years. In 50 years, the two quantities will be equal to each other. Determine the hydrogen ion concentration range if the pH is to be kept between 4.5 and 6.8. Do you remember how pH was measured using the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration? So if we use that formula, then we want 4.5 to be smaller than negative log hydrogen ion concentration less than 6.8. So first, let's get rid of the negative sign and then undo it logarithms. So we have 10 to power negative 4.5 greater than hydrogen ion concentration greater than 10 to the power negative 6.8. So using your calculators, we can see the range of the hydrogen ion concentration so that the pH is between 4.5 and 6.8. All right. A cooked turkey's temperature is modeled by the function 74 plus 115 e to the power negative 0.02 t, where t is the number of minutes after it was taken out of the oven and the temperature is measured in Fahrenheit. So it's asking you to determine the time range when the bird temperature will be between 140 and 160 degrees. So what do we think we should do? Go ahead, yep, so set up the inequality, subtract 74 from both sides. So now we have this equation, divide everything by 115. And now as e to the power, so we're going to have to take natural log. Now we have a divide by negative 0 0.02. Division by negative will change all the inequality signs. And now all you have to do is compute it with your calculators. So. So somewhere between 15 and 28 minutes is what you can say.